More and more students are taking on more and more debt. But rather than simplistic solutions like bailing out struggling borrowers, there are smarter ways to help Americans afford the educational opportunities they need to flourish. In just the last 10 years alone, the number of student loan borrowers has more than doubled, from 4.7 million to 9.9 million. The average student borrower now owes just under $30,000, and total student loan debt outstanding exceeds $1 trillion. These numbers have led to panic claims that student debt is ruining our economy and to federal policies that bail out struggling borrowers by forgiving large sums of student loan debt. But a new AI paper by economist Beth Akers shows that there's little direct correlation between steep loan balances and financial hardship. In fact, families with relatively little debt often have the highest rates of financial hardship. Rather than simply bail out borrowers after the fact, we need to rethink the way we hand out student aid to encourage more responsible lending and more responsible spending. Here are three solutions. There are income share agreements, where private investors pay the full cost of a college degree in return for a percentage of a student's future income. Because investors want to be repaid, they help to guide students towards programs that are valuable. This idea got a recent boost when Senator Marco Rubio and Representative Tom Petri introduced a bill that would clarify basic standards. But there's more work to be done. Another option is the social impact bond where private investors front the money for a particular social program and then get reimbursed if the program is successful. If the program exceeds expectations, investors get a share of the savings as a return on their investment. Take job training. Employers need skilled workers and high school graduates need an opportunity to train. If the employers were to front the money for a job training program and it was successful, not only would they have more skilled employees to hire, but they would also be entitled to a share of the savings from reduced unemployment rolls. Finally, we need to give people more flexibility and control over how they spend their student aid dollars. Consider a human capital savings account, a pot of money that would follow people throughout their life. They could use it to pay for college, short-term job training, even a single course in a growing industry. Because payments would come out of a fixed budget constraint, students would have more incentive to invest their money wisely over time. This more flexible approach would not only encourage more responsible spending on the part of students, but is a much better fit for a rapidly evolving job market.